Welcome to Paradise in the Pines, a podcast about the people, places, and stories that make this the home of American golf. Brought to you by the Pinehurst Southern Pines Aberdeen Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to Paradise in the Pines. I'm Phil Wurz, President and CEO of the Pinehurst Southern Pines Aberdeen Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. And we are joined today, honored to have uh, Joshua Payton, President and CEO of the Veterans Golf Association. Joshua, welcome to Paradise in the Pines. Thanks. Thanks. I really appreciate you having me, Phil. Not a problem. Uh, we've been friends for a few years. I've been here about five yeah. years. And uh, um, man, we've got a, you've got a great story to tell. And, and a great organization does a lot of great things for a lot of great honorable people. Uh, talk about how you formed the Veterans Golf Association. Well, um, so I, I spent probably right at 20 years uh, in in the area down at Fort Bragg uh, serving as an infantry officer. And um, I was coming up on retirement in 2014 and uh, really didn't know much about the area uh, at all. Uh, I, uh, I was told that I needed to go speak with a gentleman by the name of Jack Nance. Hmm. And... Uh, <laughs> And, uh, He's the executive director of Carolina's Golf Association. Yes, right. And um, and so uh, somewhere in the summer of 2014, uh, we ended up, uh, thanks to uh, uh, Kelly Miller, uh, we ended up having a, a, a an impromptu meeting uh, down at uh, at Pine Needles uh, in the bar out there, and uh, uh, Jack Nance really kind of laid out what I needed to do t- in order to kind of create. Uh, a competitive golf league for mm. veterans. Uh, at that point, we didn't have any. Uh, we didn't have any members. Uh, we didn't even really have a structure at that point. Yeah. And because uh, I was still serving as a commander down in the 82nd Airborne Division, and so, um, you know, as a matter of fact, I was, uh, you know, just talking with you. I just gotten back from um, from Orlando uh, a couple of days ago, and um, you know, uh, saw Kelly Miller down there and, um, obviously our, our hearts go out to, to loss for, for his family and Bonnie, Bonnie and, yep. um, passing away and, mm-hmm. um, you know, Pat McGowan, uh, who's a close friend. And, um, so, so at any rate, we were talking about, um, uh, how Jack Nance had, um, had given the veteran golfers association, their offices in Weston when they were, um, you know, building the offices across the street from, uh, from Pine Needles. And, uh, and so that's what got me to the area. Yeah. Um, you know, he donated the, the, uh, the offices, office space that he had for 20 plus years in the West End area. And so I ended up finding a, a, a house for rent over in, uh, <laughs> Seven Lakes, hole number three. And, um, and off we went, uh, trying to bring golf to veterans, um, around the country. And so, um, one of the first stops that I had, uh, was, uh, to, uh, to Pinehurst and, um, and really just told them that I wanted to bring a national championship for veterans to Mm -hmm. Pinehurst number two. And, um, you know, the support that we received, uh, for that event, uh, which really was like a beta. It was kind of like a beta season, a yeah. test season to uh-huh. see like, okay, do veterans really want to play uh, high level competitive golf against one another? And um, gosh, the, we, we, you know, uh, we, we got a, a resounding yes across yeah. the, across the country. And, um, and so uh, culminated, uh, we did eight regional events um, across the country that first year in 2015 and it culminated with a national championship at Pinehurst number two, uh, started with about 300 members that first year. I remember like, how do you get, how do you reach all these people? I wasn't really, uh, you know, up to speed on social media or right. any of those things. So, what we, you know, I ended up taking about $40,000 out of my own personal savings from deployments and stuff across, you know, 20 years of military service and said, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm passionate about this. Let's see what, uh, what we can do with it. So we started off with, uh, billboard signs. So we picked like the the cities that we were going to go to the eight cities that we decided to have, um, our uh, military towns, our military, uh, qualifiers at and, uh, put up billboards and, uh, uh, like I said, that got us 300 members the first year, and mm. then we went to like 700 members the second year, and now, uh, going nine, nine years later, we're over 17,000 members wow. uh, across the across the country. So, uh, last year we did 
1200 golf tournaments uh and hosted right at 70,000 rounds of golf which is which is pretty incredible and as far as impact goes that's about a four and a half million dollar impact to the golfing community alone yeah uh but you know the thing that we're, we're really proud of is is how um we're bringing camaraderie and competition to the veteran community through the game of golf and, and that's the biggest thing uh that the vga stands for and i imagine because you hear about ptsd and things like that the transition is really i think where this is so instrumental in helping guys go from deployment to retiring getting finding a life back in the united states i mean it how much is golf golf has got to play a huge role in that well i know that it personally did for me you know i, I got a chance to play for the combat uh the the wounded warrior open uh as well it was the wounded warrior Ryder cup essentially uh the simpson cup team in 2013 and uh uh, I had almost lost my hand in 2011 in Iraq, was in a vehicle over uh, rollover incident. And uh, so I spent about two years at Walter Reed going mm. through a lot of hand surgeries to save my right hand from amputation. And then I got a chance to play for uh, the Simpson Cup team at Royal Lytham St. Anne's in England, wow. which, is, which is pretty crazy cool. to think about. You know, you take uh, 12 combat wounded vets from the United States and then you put them against in a competitive atmosphere against 12 combat wounded vets from the United Kingdom kingdom and you put them <laughs> on a golf course like royal litham st anne's yeah. which is a host site of you know many uh british opens yeah. and uh rider cups and and because they had a military rider cup going on yeah exactly that's exactly what it was and so um man it was uh you know when i stood on the first tee box I, it, a lot of people haven't played royal litham st anne's but if you if you have played it you know that the first the on the first tee box is a par three it's pretty daunting par three about 175 yards you know <laughs> and so um i'm standing on the first tee box and they they go you know next on the tee is captain retired josh payton representing the united states of america my <laughs> oh my god i'm getting chills <laughs> I, i'm telling you my my legs went numb uh and i was like man can i just pull out the driver here <laughs> you know, i gotta I got to hit a, uh, I got to hit a precise a, shot, a precise yeah. shot, you know? So I pull out my five iron and, um, and, and I don't remember swinging, but I hit it to about 15 feet, huh. which is pretty, pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, didn't make the putt. I ended up parring, having the hole, but, uh, gosh, it was, um, it was such an incredible experience that, um, you know, I didn't want to wait another year for that, Phil. I wanted mm. to, you know, kind of see, if um, there were more veterans out there that uh, that really enjoyed the, the game of golf like I did, especially on a competitive level. And so, um, man, uh, you know, it's been um, quite, quite the quite the ride ever since then. I, one of the uh, guys that was on my team um, was a former Army sniper. His name is Joe Cayley, hmm. uh, and uh, he's a retired captain. He lives down in Augusta, Georgia. Um, there's some, <laughs> there's some pretty cool Augusta national stories that he has, huh. um, you know, in his, in, in his, uh, bank of stories. But, uh, um, he, uh, he was on my team in 2013 and, uh, you know, co-founded the VGA with me and, uh, he's one of my best buds. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, uh, just, uh, just the honor of a lifetime to be able to, uh, help, you know, bring golf to veterans and, um, and to do it at some, some pretty amazing golf courses around the country. Talk about that and how much it's grown. Cause in my research, I had 450 tournaments. Uh, I forget where I saw that, but now you're saying over a thousand, 1200. I mean, it's, it's grown and you've yeah, only been in existence for like eight years. It's, it's honestly, it's, it's really difficult to keep up on the, on our website with, you know, all of the, you know, all of the growth that we've had. Um, you know, we could not run the organization without our volunteer leaders. So we mm. have, we've broken up the country into four, uh, four division, four regions, a North region, a South region, a central region and a West region. And, um, and we have regional directors that have state directors underneath them that report to them and, and create these schedules, these 12 months. And all the infrastructure is there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so without these volunteer leaders, uh, that, you know, they're not doing it for pay. They're doing it for their brothers and sisters yeah. in arms to get them out of the house, to get them on the golf course, um, you know, near them. So, 
you know, we've got an entire uh, entire entire team uh, that makes this happen, and then and then we have, um, you know, our director of operations, Joan Tishman, who, uh, gosh, man, she is the backbone of our organization. She's you know she's she's taking all the phone calls when people are saying you know that we're that are praising the things that we're doing, yeah. and then she's also taking the phone calls when, you know, we we've got some people that aren't happy with the product, and so. Um, you know, we try to take all that in and, and make the organization better uh, year over year. And I think that I, I think we're doing a, a pretty good job, uh, given the, the type of growth that we've had over the last uh, eight years. And you're headquartered right here in Pinehurst, right there in the village of Pinehurst. Um, so talk about the, the growth and it's from all branches of military, correct? Well, it is. Yeah. And I, so I do want to talk about that because that really, um, it, 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 you know, being in the, the heart of, of the village of Pinehurst, um, it, it just didn't happen by, by accident. We have got so many good people that are a part of this community. Um, one of those people, um, uh, is a guy uh, that recently passed away. His name is Barry Lerman. Um, mm, yeah, and, he was on the airport. Uh, yes, board. Yep. And so, so how he got involved with the the Veteran Golfers Association? Um, he, you know, he owned a couple of planes, uh, had retired. Um, he had done really well in the plastics industry up in Connecticut, and then retired down here to uh, to North Carolina. And um, and on occasion, when he was flying, his one of his passions, other than golf, was was flying was flying around the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and he would take his wife Mora, and they would go on cool trips and. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, he loved flying. And so one year, um, we had, uh, an, one of our national, uh, qualifiers was up in the Mohegan sun in Connecticut, which mm -hmm. is where, where Barry grew up at. And there happened to be a double amputee. Uh, his name is Sergeant Andrew Smith and needed a, a flight up to Connecticut cause he was trying to get to Pinehurst. Mm. And so, um, uh, Wings of Honor is is a group that that Barry was was a part of, and he saw this request come through for this sergeant that wanted to go up to to Connecticut, and uh, and so this sergeant ends up getting on per Barry's plane, hmm. and uh, and and goes up to uh, the Mohegan Sun in Connecticut and sinks like an eighteen footer uh, for, wow. <laughs> to qualify to come to Pinehurst. Hmm. And then not only does he qualify to come to Pinehurst, but he ends up winning a championship down wow. here. And that that was such a uh, powerful moment for our organization. And so I got a chance to meet Barry over breakfast um, about seven, eight years ago, and we became really close friends. And then he ended up buying that building uh, in the village of Pinehurst. And he said, Josh, you know, this corner store right here, uh, this needs to be the home of the VGA. When mm. people come into the village of Pinehurst, I want them to see all the great things that the VGA is doing for the military community. And so he donated that spot to us. Wow, that's awesome. And, uh, you know, and so um, unfortunately, um, he passed away a couple of, you know, he passed away last year. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you know, there's a big ceremony. I don't know if you got to go to his, his funeral. I did um, not. I, I remember I was out of town at the time. But, um, you know, so many, David McClay Kidd is, you know, is a world renowned uh, gar golf architect, a golf course designer. Um, he was there and he's really close friends with Barry and they, you know, they flew across the world together. And um, so anyway, that it's not just the fact that we're in the village of Pinehurst. We're in the village of Pinehurst um, for a purpose and because of the members of this community. And that's you know, kind of what, what I think makes Pinehurst so special, yeah. it, you know, you've got golf, you've got the military. Um, and, but the biggest thing is the people. And, uh, and, and that is, uh, and that's what just, you know, I think makes, makes our area, uh, Moore County really special. Talk about your headquarters, uh, there in the village of Pinehurst, right next to Purple Thistle across the street from Drum and Quill, pretty much almost diagonally across. But, um, what are people going to see when they stop by? I've been there. It's a, it's an awesome place to visit. Yeah. So what we use it for, uh, is our national headquarters. Um, it's open on Thursdays, uh, through Sundays from noon to six. Uh, really, uh, it is, uh, where we carry all of our kind of like a pro shop where we carry all of the items that we sell to VGA members on online at vjclubhouse.com. So it's kind of like an online or fulfillment space for us. Uh, but it's also 
part uh, VFW style bar. So we have a bar that's made out of wood from <laughs> right. Pinehurst Number no. Two, which yeah. is you know, uh, again, um, that wouldn't happen uh, without our friends from Heritage Flag Company and Heath um, Heath Trigg, and and mm -hmm. you know, it's real. This is a just you know everything that that uh, that that happens that's really special uh, here in this this uh, this area is because of community. So uh, Heath donated some 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 trees that had fallen off, off of pinehurst number two i believe it was hurricane it was uh, matthew hurricane matthew yep. there you go and uh and he's got a secret like stash location of <laughs> you know um you know invaluable trees that i'm sure he would never tell where that the the grid coordinates of that stash is but um he was uh gracious enough to donate one to our bar um it was cut down by um uh, a guy, a, a woodworksman and a carpenter. Um, his name is, uh, uh, gosh, um, uh, Craig. Oh man. I'm trying to think of his Craig Schiffmacher, but he is also, uh, he, he's also works on the maintenance staff at Pinehurst as huh. well. So, um, he, you know, carves this amazing, uh, bar, uh, and he puts it, puts it together for us at the VGA clubhouse. So yeah. it kind of points. Oh, <laughs> Uh, the, po okay. the point is that, um, the, uh, the VJ clubhouse is kind of part bar, um, so that our vets can come in and, you know, kind of enjoy their, you know, after their round of golf, kind of come back and enjoy, you know, some, some adult beverages and, uh, you know, uh, have an opportunity to get some VGA gear at the same time. You talked about, um, doing some of your service. And first of all, thank you so much for your service to our country. Um, Ford Bragg, such a instrumental part of this location, this destination. I think in years past, as this destination grows and, and doubles in size over the next 10, 15 years, um, why have guys chosen, you've chosen because of golf, but what is it that attracts people like Micah Neubauer from Southern Pines Brewing Company, former Army Green Beret, and all these other guys have decided that maybe served at Fort Bragg and, and don't go to other parts of the country, that they love this area. It's a the golf, the community. What is it about the military that it's keeping them here now? I, well, I think, I think there's a lot to say about the beauty of Pinehurst and the Moore County area, whether it's Southern Pines or Aberdeen or, you know, Vass. Uh, I mean, I think it, you know, when, when I have people that come here and they've come here for the first time, they, they tell me that it, it feels like Narnia. Like, <laughs> right. It's like they make a right <laughs> off of highway one yeah. and, and then something, it just feels magical. Yeah. Um, and maybe it's the size of the trees, Phil, maybe it's, you know, kind of, you know, people, we, you know, I live in Pine Wild, which is an amazing, mm -hmm. uh, amazing golf community. Um, uh, and, uh, and we have, we have pine straw as our front yards. <laughs> people don't, <laughs> people don't have pine straw. They're like, where's your grass at? No, no, yeah. this is like, and there's just something I think that's magical about, you know, uh, the beauty of our area. And you probably wouldn't know it until you actually come here. Uh, and you might get here by happenstance, uh, you might be coming here, uh, for intention. Uh, but, uh, when you do get here, you realize pretty quickly, it's a special place. And I think our location too, an hour South of Raleigh, two hours East of Charlotte, uh, when you leave, especially what's been going on in the last few years that to leave the bigger cities and to come here, you know, I, I say it's kind of like Mayberry. I mean, you really kind of step back in time and you look at the village and, you know, you look at pictures from 125 years ago and in many ways it, it's never changed. So, you know, it's, it's a place where you can kind of relax, unwind, you know, and just have fun and, and play a ton of golf. Yeah, I think it's kind of funny, you know, when I got here and you're like Tom Pashley saying, stop promoting Pinehurst. We don't want more people here, you know? And I think the secret's out. Yeah, the secret is out. And, um, you know, it's kind of funny, like during uh, COVID, like you would see a, a, a lot of people like out of, out of town plates. And yeah. you'd be like, what is that person doing? Why are they bringing COVID into I, our I community? Would, <laughs> I literally would walk through the parking lot at Pinehurst Resort every weekend. <laughs> right. And there were no less than 15, 18 license plates from other states. I yeah. mean, from the beginning of the pandemic on, it right. was just everybody just said, okay, social distancing, uh, this is where I'm going to go. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think you can kind of see um kind of the explosion and the growth you can see it in a couple of different areas you can see it in the the you know our our home prices right mm. um what's the cost per square foot uh and 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 how much that has exploded yeah. uh over the last 6 years and then 
uh, then you can kind of just see it. Okay, the traffic circle. How long do you have to wait at the traffic circle? <laughs> we kind of talk about that internally, you know, with friends and stuff like that. How long did you wait at the traffic circle? <laughs> Everybody, everybody's got a story, <laughs> right? It's like, no, I went around the traffic circle, you know. So, um, you know, it's kind of funny, especially you know, you come back from uh, Orlando where we had just you know just spent the last ten days out at the PJ merchandise yeah. show, and uh, which was you know incredible event. You know, I was telling you for us. It, as an organization, it was a milestone because it was the first time that we had actually had a booth out mm -hmm. on the floor. And so that was a pretty cool event for us. And not only that, but we had out of our 150 uh, volunteer leaders, uh, we had about 50 of those that were in-house. They were there for, you know, uh, leadership seminars on standard operating procedures, on how to use Golf Genius, on how to make our events better for our members across the country, yeah. which is, which is kind of cool. But you know, you get back from a long trip like that and you go, man, it's nice to be home in Pinehurst. No doubt. Orlando, if you know, I've been going to Orlando since I was a kid and I never, you know, never been down to Orlando when they didn't have ridiculous amounts of traffic or they had yeah. some construction going on on I-4. Right. You know, and uh, and so, you know, that's another thing, you know, is getting back to Pinehurst and just go, man, it's nice to be home. No doubt about that. But when you go to the PGA show, it is literally everything and everything in the world of golf. I mean, it would take you, I think it took me one day, I walked the floor and I, it must have taken me a couple hours to like make my way through everything. I bought a massage chair there. I got a hell of a deal on it, and I love that thing. I, I got rid of that recently, but uh, but man, what a great show! But but again, uh, you really kind of understand you know the significance of Pinehurst and everything that's happening here with the USGA and Golf House Pinehurst, the World Golf Hall of Fame coming back. I mean, we're so lucky to be in this destination can and and you just recently recently got married you started a family yeah. so what's it like for you your life has changed here over the last well, it's year great you know my wife rachel she works for uh for first health and um you know we we love we love the community we she's pregnant by the way we've got a little son congratulations um, yeah we're you know we're expecting and so um kind of being in the military i never really had a home you know it's kind of like you're where are you from originally? Uh, well, originally my, my dad was Air Force, so we, his my whole family is from Louisiana, but we kind of started okay. in England Air Force Base and went to the Azores mm. and then ended up in South Carolina. Okay. So really it was kind of, um, you know, just kind of lived all over the place and never really was able to put down roots. This is home. And so this is home for us now, and it's really it's really special. So, you know, I, I I'm – we were talking about earlier, like, where do we send our, where do we send our, our kid to school here in the area? You know, so we're talking to other parents and kind of, you know, kind of navigating that kind of stuff. And, um, so, you know, it's fun. It's fun for us. Um, I saw, actually saw, uh, Mark drum was down at the, uh, was down at the PGA show. Yeah. And, and you know, as, as long as I've known Mark and how long he, you know, the drum and quill has been across the street from the VGA national headquarters. Um, I never knew that he was in the golfing industry. Which is kind of crazy, you know. I just, you know, he he owns a really cool bar in the village yeah. of Pinehurst, and that was, you know, and he's been on the village council. Kevin Drum, and, I'm sorry, Kevin. Yes, Kevin Drum. Yes, and uh, so uh, yeah, so yeah, saw Kevin Drum down. Kevin, Kevin's you know, down uh, the, he, Kevin's a Tim Whistle. <laughs> yeah, saw <laughs> saw him down at the uh, PGA show. Yeah, and um, and and it was like, man, Kevin, what are you doing here? Yeah, and he's like, well, I've been in the golf industry, you know, my dad. Yeah, Bob in, Drum, famous. My, my dad was in the golf industry. Yeah. And so um, I was like, gosh, man, uh, it's good to see you. you know, <laughs> see you back in Pinehurst kind of thing, you know. So, um, yeah, so we have a pretty special little spot. How's your golf game? Well, you know, it's always if I if – I, first of all, if you ever want your golf game to get better, don't go in the golf, <laughs> golf business, period. Uh, you know, but uh, you know, I'm, I was pretty athletic. I played baseball at West Point. So I was, you know, if I roll off the side of the bed, I'm going to shoot an 83, 84. It yeah. doesn't matter. But uh, we've played a couple of times. Yeah. We yeah. have a lot of fun. Yeah, we absolutely do. I think last time we played was CCNC after yeah. a couple of, uh, I think we played with Tom, Tom Beto over there. Yeah, we did. Yeah, and uh, actually you had a chance. We had, uh, a fire pit collective, uh, Matt Janella's, uh, brand, uh, and his sidekick Colt Needler here last year. And you got a chance to play with him. Uh, he's got a really good game and, uh, you guys played at legacy, which has a, a it's kind of near and dear to you. Right. Legacy is, uh, you know, where I was, grew up as a soldier playing golf. And so I would come down there and play 35 bucks a, a round and it was, it was inexpensive, but I felt like I was 
you know, I was felt like I was playing a U.S. Open style golf course. That's how it's cool a beautiful it was golf me, course. You know? Yeah, it's a great golf course. And um, yeah, so uh, having the Fire Pit Collective um, kind of highlight the Veteran Golfers Association was fantastic. So thanks for having them, um, and uh, hopefully can do more things like that in the future. I'm sure you've got a ton of stories of guys that you know golf has really kind of been their savior. Maybe um, how much fulfillment do you get um, in your role creating this? giving an opportunity for guys to transition and, and really find something in the game of golf that is truly special. It, it you know, honestly, for me, Phil, it's really humbling. Uh, it's just a humbling thing. You know, we, we try to focus on the real positive parts of the game. So we don't try to focus on, you know, maybe an injury that they've sustained or PTSD or something like that. But I will tell you that, um, you know, it's, for the veteran community, suicide is a is an epidemic, mm. and you know we we lose 22 veterans a day to suicide. Uh, but the thing that I'm most proud of with the Veteran Golfers Association is in the past nine years we haven't lost a single VJ member to suicide. That's incredible, and I think that's really um, I think it's a testament to our volunteer leaders that really care about our members. You know if if Phil misses a tea time at one thirty at the cradle or whatever the case may be, you know, he, you know, our leader is calling, Hey Phil, is everything all right? You doing okay? Yeah. You know, why'd you miss your tea time today? And, um, and I, and I think, you know, trying to stay positive, giving our guys goals, you know, we were talking a little bit about some of the golf courses that our yeah. members get to play. And so having goals, um, is a big part of that programming. Two years ago, we were at Baltusrol for yeah. you know twentieth um, for the twentieth anniversary of the nine eleven, mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty incredible. So our our players got to play a split championship at Baltusrol and Plainfield in Northern Jersey, which you know, gosh, you know, if you're not uh, it, most people in the you know that the, the that love the game don't get a chance to play Baltusrol, right? Uh, but our but our members did. Um, and this past year, we were at Doral down in Miami. Uh, somehow we got through a hurricane. <laughs> hurricane Ian <laughs> hit us at the same time we were trying to tee it up, but we got two rounds in and crowned a champion. Um, this next year we're uh, at Fallen Oak in the fall, so that's in Biloxi, Mississippi. So a lot of people don't know about that course, mm. but people do know about Shadow Creek yeah. in Vegas mm -hmm. uh, as the number one casino course uh, in the world. It's like $1,000 a round, isn't it? So Something like that. Fallen Oak is the number two wow. casino golf course huh. in the in, in the Biloxi. Country. Okay, yeah, I so heard that. Yeah. In Biloxi, it's, it's kind of like Vegas, but a little more family-friendly is, yeah. is kind of what I would say. So... Uh, but our, our, you know, our players get a chance to play uh, for a championship down at Fallen Oak, and um, we also have our military Ryder Cup style championship that is um, called the Armed Forces Cup, and that'll be hosted at uh, Champions Retreat down in Augusta. Okay, yeah, great um, course. Memorial Day, so mm -hmm. um, you know they they host the Augusta National Women's Am uh, the first the first two rounds of that. So um, you know, so our players get to set goals. Uh, and, and, and get to achieve those through the VGA. And so I, I'm really, really humbled to be a part of that. I guess kind of off the, uh, a little bit off the VGA, there's a, there's a fun event you guys do at the harness track every like May. I, I know Dan, uh, our podcast producer and destination storyteller, we got a kick out of it the first year you did it. Cause somebody yeah. took out the, the timing device in the center where these, <laughs> these golf carts are like, they're like NASCARs. I mean, it's pretty cool to watch. Yeah. So th that, that actually came from, um, we were we we're trying richard petty is has been close uh to my family for you know several years and so we were trying to figure out how can we you know richard petty's in racing and <laughs> you know we're in golf so how do we kind of combine that together and so we come up we came up with a a uh, golf cart drag race called the race of the pines yeah and uh and so we do it out there at the harness track we get you know uh, golf carts from as north as Canada, as west as Houston. Uh, you know, it's pretty some crazy, crazy souped up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> golf carts. It's pretty yeah. wild. But what's what's interesting is I, I believe um, we are the only uh, we are the only sanctioned golf cart race in the country. Wow. So, and Richard Petty's and Phil Ford comes yeah, as well. Phil Ford comes out there. Richard Petty, if you you know you're a North Carolina fan, I'm a Duke fan, so I give there you go. I give uh, Phil Ford hell about it all the time. <laughs> but love Phil and uh, really appreciate all his support. So if you want to get involved with the VGA, how do you do that? How do you donate? Uh, what do you need to do? 
Yeah, so, uh, you know, if you want to follow us, uh, go on all of our social media handles, um, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook, it's at VGA Golf. Uh, if you are a veteran or the family member of a veteran, you know, we don't talk about that enough, but the, the family members of veterans, you know, when they go downrange, they take care of the house, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, maybe you're the son or the daughter of a World War II um, veteran that you want to go out and play golf and honor their name. Uh, we have a lot yeah. of VGA members that, that do that as well. So if you're a, a veteran or the family member of a veteran, you're eligible to be a VGA member. So we'll encourage you to go to vgagolf.org and uh, come join our VGA family. Come out and tee it up with us and, and have fun. That's what it's all about. Let's go tee it up soon. How about that? Let's do that. Cool. Man. Josh Payton, it's an honor. Thank you again for your service. Thank you for everything you've done for this country, what you do for the VGA and for our veterans. We really appreciate it. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again in Paradise in the Pines. Thanks, Phil. Uh, if you want to learn more about tourism in Moore County, go to homeofgolf.com. If you want to watch this vodcast, any other videos that Dan Dreyer does with his magical camera as a destination storyteller, go to our YouTube channel, Home of American Golf, and follow this podcast. Any of the podcasts, your favorite one out there, look for and search for Paradise in the Pines and follow us. I'm Phil Words with the Convention Visitors Bureau, and we'll see you next time.